Madeline's face turned white. She was indeed so dirty and battered in his heart. Jeremy, put some respect in your words. Daniel pulled Madeline behind him and the atmosphere between them suddenly became a state of mutual hostility. Jeremy chuckled lowly. Respect? You're in cahoots with a wedded woman in public and you're still trying to talk to me about respect? He was using sharp words, showing that he did not even care about Madeline's feelings. When have you treated Maddie as your wife? Plus, she's not your wife anymore. Daniel was not afraid of Jeremy. He was facing him head on. Jeremy's face was covered with a layer of cold air. He looked at Madeline with an eerie look in his eyes. Is this how you seduce a man outside? Madeline felt a chill running down her spine. She did not understand the frustration in Jeremy's eyes. He reached his hand over and pulled Madeline to his side. His arrogant eyes peered at Daniel. She's still my lawfully wedded wife, and even if I'm tired of her one day, I won't let you have the chance to get my hand-me-downs. He humiliated Madeline with the cruelest words he could think of, and after he said that, he pushed Madeline into his car roughly. Daniel rushed over to stop him when he saw this, but when he saw Madeline stopping him with her eyes, he stood still. Plus, what Jeremy said just now was lingering in his head. They were still married. Madeline did not know where Jeremy was taking her. He was driving very fast, causing her to feel dizzy and nauseous. She remembered what he warned her about and she burst out laughing all of a sudden while she looked at the man who was driving. You're going back on your words, Mr. Whitman. You said a woman like me isn't worthy of getting in your car. Why are you not afraid of me dirtying it now? I'm filthy, don't you remember? After she said that, Jeremy's face was extremely dark. He did not say anything, but Madeline could feel the car speed up even more. The feeling of car sickness became more and more intense. Madeline could not endure it anymore. Jeremy, stop. Where are you taking me? Do you want to get out and look for Daniel so much? His tone was icy. Madeline felt frustrated. So what? We're over. Hey. Jeremy chuckled lowly as if she had just told him a joke. Madeline, do you think you can start and end a marriage with me anytime you want? He looked at her with an icy gaze, causing her heart to skip a beat. She did not understand what he was saying. However, she understood one thing, and it was the fact that Jeremy was going to marry Meredith soon. If that was the case, their tomfoolery should end soon. The car finally came to a stop and Madeline saw that it was a high-end beauty salon. Jeremy pushed Madeline to the staff and told them to make her look decent. Madeline did not know what Jeremy wanted to do, but she did not want to cooperate with him. If you don't want the people around you to get involved, then do as I say. He warned her. The people around her. Madeline could only think of Ava. Her grandfather was dead and he could not threaten her with him anymore. Ava was the only friend Madeline cared about. One hour later, Madeline's makeover was done. She was wearing a champagne-colored gown that accentuated her curves. Her short hair made her face look even more delicate and dainty. She looked extremely classy. When Jeremy saw Madeline, his eyes lit up, but it disappeared quickly. Madeline did not expect Jeremy to bring her to Whitman Manor. When they got out of the car, his warm hand reached over and grabbed Madeline's waist. His palm was in close contact with her skin. It was fall and the wind was cold. However, Madeline felt that Jeremy's palm was burning hot. Grandpa wants to see you. His low and deep voice lingered in her ears, and Madeline's heart beat faster. However, she would not have the naive expectations that she used to have anymore. Now, her love for Jeremy was overpowered by her hatred toward him. Madeline did not expect that old master Whitman would not mind that she had been to prison for three years. Instead, he kindly told Madeline to restart her life and live a good life with Jeremy. The old master was obviously an old-fashioned person. Therefore, it stood to reason that he should be furious and even disgusted by his granddaughter-in-law for having done such a crime. However, at this moment, Madeline was stunned. She felt grateful and warm. The old master also reminded her of her grandfather who had passed away. They were all such kind-hearted old men. Madeline ate dinner at Whitman Manor. She could clearly feel that everyone except for the old master was sneering at her, especially Jeremy's mother. After the old master left, Jeremy's mother showed a look of contempt at Madeline. If you're smart, you should take the initiative to propose a non-contentious divorce and not hinder Jeremy and Meredith's wedding. She was extremely snobbish and was looking down on Madeline. You killed Meredith's child once. 
If you have a conscience, you should divorce Jeremy immediately. Slowly, Madeline understood what was happening. She looked at Jeremy. He sat at one side and did not speak. It was obvious that this was his intention. She wanted to burst out laughing. After trying to wrap her head around this for so long, she finally realized that they did not dare to disobey the old master, so they wanted her to be the one who proposed the divorce instead. Then, Meredith arrived just in time while holding a little boy whose cheeks were blushing pink. Madeline's heart throbbed. Looking at the boy's pink and tender face, she thought of her precious daughter who had died tragically. She looked at the child who was standing next to Meredith and her heart felt as if it was being stabbed by a knife. If her child had not died, she would be at his age now. Suddenly, there was a strong reluctance in her heart. Seeing Meredith's triumphant face, Madeline smiled deeply. Why should I take the initiative to file for divorce? When she asked this question, the smile on Meredith's face disappeared. Jeremy's reaction was surprisingly calm. He glanced at Madeline with interest and said nothing. Madeline was a little uncomfortable with how he looked at her. Jeremy, I won't divorce you. Otherwise, how would I be worthy of all the things I did to get on your bed? She said this deliberately just to disgust Meredith and the people who could not wait to see Jeremy dump her. Madeline, how can you be so cheap? Don't be so shameless. Jeremy's mother said angrily. Madeline did not care. She watched as Meredith's eyes became darker. Meredith was obviously very upset, but she could not do anything. She said innocently and softly to Madeline, Maddie, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Jeremy and you have lawfully wedded after all. I'm the superfluous one. If you know that you're superfluous, why don't you go away? Are you proud of seducing a married man? Madeline did not go easy on Meredith at all. Meredith was stunned and had an awkward expression on her face. A few seconds later, she ran out while covering her face aggrievedly. Mommy. Seeing Meredith's departure, the child waddled adorably after her. Madeline was tired of watching Meredith putting on a show, but unfortunately, it still worked on these people. Jeremy looked at Madeline with a dark expression before turning around to chase after Meredith. Jeremy's mother also walked away while grumbling. Madeline left, but she did not expect to see Meredith and Jeremy's child as soon as she went out. Looking at his delicate and angelic face, Madeline was heartbroken. Why should her baby be cruelly burnt to ashes while Meredith's son was so favored by everyone? How unfair. Madeline clenched her fists and was unable to control the flames of hatred in her heart. She walked forward and went straight to the child. The little guy turned around as he probably heard the sound of footsteps approaching. His cute and blank face was facing Madeline now. His bright and clear eyes were like glazed tiles as they blinked and stared at Madeline. The spark of hatred in Madeline's heart seemed to be extinguished in an instant. Then, it was replaced by unspeakable love and kindness. Tears stung the corner of her eyes and she suddenly had an urge to cry. If my baby's still here, she would be as cute as him too. After all, Jeremy was so outstanding. His offspring who inherited his genes would surely be as good looking. Madeline bent over and stroked his delicate, cute face. What's your name, honey? The little guy blinked and said adorably, my mommy and daddy call me Jack. Mommy and daddy. Those words hurt Madeline. Her baby should have her mommy and daddy as well, but now. Maddie, what are you trying to do again? You can do anything to me, but please don't hurt my and Jeremy's son. Meredith's screaming sounded unusually exaggerated. In addition to that, she especially emphasized that this was her and Jeremy's son. Madeline had never thought about doing anything to this innocent child. When she heard what Meredith screamed, she wanted to laugh. Maybe she should really learn some lessons on how to be cruel from this woman. Mommy. The little guy ran over immediately. Meredith lifted Jack with a worried look, then she inspected him nervously. Let mommy see if you're injured. Madeline chuckled softly. Meredith, your acting skills are really getting better and better. Maddie, why are you so cruel? Meredith looked at Madeline grievously. Three years ago, you stole my boyfriend and killed my first child with Jeremy. Why do you still want to hurt my son three years later? Although we're not biological sisters, I've always treated you well. Seeing Meredith's hypocritical performance, Madeline sneered after listening indifferently, you really do treat me well, so I'll definitely repay you, my good sister. Quote dot 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 quote. Meredith was stunned when she heard those words. She was speechless for a while. 
Madeline was quite pleased when she saw Meredith's bewilderment and puzzlement. Not wanting to waste any more time talking to her, Madeline was about to leave when she saw Jeremy walking over. Under the moonlight, his cold air of asceticism was even more charming than it was three years ago. Madeline's heart beat faster, but she would never have any expectations or fantasies about this man again. She glanced at him indifferently and passed by him without stopping. Jeremy frowned and reached out to grab Madeline's arm. Where are you going, Mrs. Whitman? He parted his lips, his tone filled with puzzlement. Madeline stopped and noticed Meredith's face turning darker and darker from the corner of her eye. She pursed her pink lips and smiled at Jeremy. What do you think, darling? It's already so late. Of course, I'm going home. Madeline smiled pretentiously, and then she saw a subtle glint in Jeremy's eyes. The man let go of her hand when she was not sure what it was. Wait for me in the car. I'll come right away.